Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, no one could tell the extent of devastation it would cause the world. Almost two years into this global health crisis now, the world is reeling from the impact it has had on nations, on families, communities, and individuals. How long this seemingly endless bad dream we last, still no one can tell. But we can all choose to face it wide awake, confident in the knowledge that our God, our Emmanuel, is with us even through the darkest and most challenging period of our lives. Tonight, we bring to you Sinag, a virtual Christmas concert featuring the Manila Concert Choir and the UCCP Cosmopolitan Church Virtual Choir. Join us in this musical journey and just allow the message of the songs and stories speak to you tonight in the silence of your hearts. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of all hope, bless this time we have with your most holy and loving presence as we bring before you stories of our lives through heartfelt songs and powerful testimonies. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may receive your message of hope and love and come to understand even through the hurt, the doubt and fear which we at times experience, how all of these are part of your perfect plan for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
sometime uh, July, I was really not um, convinced at first that I had the signs and symptoms of COVID. True enough, I was just ignoring because I knew uh, that I was really, really well. But until the time came that I had difficulty of breathing. It was a Sunday. Mamalingki sana kami. Nilagnat ako ng mataas. Tapos ako yung nakala ko nga, baka ano to, ordinary na lagnat lang to kasi dati ko namang na-experience yung gano'n. The following day, medyo bumaba naman siya. Tapos bumalik na naman, parang siya on, on and off yung fever ko. I was I was just a, a, a bit uneasy that time. Maybe because I was feeling something different from my body. But I, I didn't mind it. Uh, my business unit head, Jasmine, called me up. And usually, very early in the morning, she told me that uh, I got I caught the virus. And then I was really shocked at that. That was my first impulse that time. Hindi namin alam kung COVID yun at that time. But then we later on confirmed that it was. I think I was the very first person in our church community na, that got hit severely. So when it hit me that I had COVID, after having that swab test, I was actually throwing the trash away. I held my breath so that I won't be able to smell uh, the stink of trash, and I thought to myself, "Wow, I'm I'm very efficient today because I didn't smell anything." <laughs> but I was really in a state of denial. Hindi ko pati na tanggap na bakit ako makakaroon ng COVID. Eh, hindi I, I I followed the strictest thing that the protocol requires me to do. So, hindi ako lumalabas. I never talk to anybody. I just go home straight. Immediately, I really had to uh, give up that denial and seek consultation. And true enough, I got positive with the test. I really did not imagine that I could catch the, the big delta. So at first, I had the flu-like symptoms. I had body aches, sore throat, and later on, progressed into cough. Eventually, hirap na akong huminga. Lalakad na ako ng mga ilang meters siguro. Ihingali na ako. Severe migraines, like, Yung tipong kapag isi-shake mo lang yung ulo mo, nawawala na ako ng vision. I was dazed. Parang gilo. Wala, wala akong nakikita. I see them but nothing is coming. Yung proseso ng mind mo parang nawala na. Yung, you want to say something but you cannot say anything. EMT personal came here. When I was uh, being led to the the stretcher, nakahiga ka. All you see is the light, darkness, light, darkness. Kasi nakita mo yung ilaw eh. On and off. Parang ganun ang naramdam. Oh dear. Sabi ko, I can see what I see in the movies. They tested my oxygen saturation level, I was at 80, 84, 85. Yun ang yung O2 set ko. Ang normal po kasi is 93. So my oxygen levels was, were really low na po talaga. On the day of my admission, my uncle, the brother of my dad, passed away at 3 o'clock on the same day that I got um, admitted. So at 3 p.m., I, I was in the hospital. I was teary-eyed because I could not even make a phone call because my doctor said I need to reserve my strength because my oxygen saturation was going down. They were devastated, especially my wife. She was so afraid uh, of what would happen to me. And she was also afraid that the kids would be, um, uh, would also have COVID. So. It was really uh, an experience. Sinasabihan ako lang ng nurse na, Juan, na mababa pa rin yung oxygen ko, oxygen level. Kailangan ako yung intubate. Kinabahan ako doon kasi nakikita ko ngayon mga kasabayan ko doon na isa-isa lang nalagutan eh, kahit naka-intubate sila. Kaya doon, kinabahan ako doon. That's care. 
of uh, and the thought of is this the the last time or last moment of my life with all the stories about covid the patients and people experiencing uh, being rushed to the hospital inserted with tubes uh, to be assisted by machines in breathing etc etc that everything all those flashed before me as i imagined what would possibly happen to me there was a time na feeling ko lord kung ito na po yung hanggang dito na lang ako okay lang rin sa akin like i i accepted you know, my mortality difficult pag isa ka lang all you hear is the beeping sounds so i could oh, hear sa tanda ko ito ngayon kaya ako tara na sa nando but um i kept my faith um like ko sinasabi um Every time, meron akong dissonance or parang denial, I just prayed. A lot of people have similar stories um, as I do. It was it was scary, but at the same time, ang naging anchor ko was uh, my faith in God. When when I thought na uh, baka ito na yung huli sa akin. Ito na yung huli kong hihinga. <laughs> And, uh, pero, hindi. Sabi ni Lord, meron pa.
Restless heart beats so imperfectly, but when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on my. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong, strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be.
I guess all throughout the journey, um, when I was being led to the emergency room, hindi ako masyadong na-shaken. Basta na, ano na ako, nagulat na ako, maybe in denial about it. But, pero I wasn't scared. I wasn't, usually, pag ganun, matatakot ako agad kasi the first instinct is how to deal with it, how, how this will affect your family. I was brought to a modular facility and um, in the modular facility, many people were there because that was at the time of the surge. People were rushed in the modular facility, rushed in to be admitted, but there were also people who were rushed out because they died. Um, it was something like uh, oh, I might be next. People were crying in desperation. They were actually um, calling their loved ones um, immediately before they they pass away. And for me, as a as a physician, that was heartbreaking. But I was so helpless; I could not do anything because me myself was also struggling. I did have my low moments inside the hospital from the very beginning of my hospitalization. That 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 lowest moment that I had, I kind of just accepted it. Like, oh Lord, kung ito na talaga, ito na talaga. When I entertained the idea of me having a having COVID, then it hit me that it might be my last moment of my life. Everything flashed before me, and there I, I somewhat talked with God. I really was so mad at first i was so mad at god i questioned him i would tell him lord i want to be honest with you nagtatampo po ako sa inyo why did you take my loved ones away i told him every feeling i poured out all my frustrations i poured out all my tears my anger and and everything that i could feel as negative as possible towards god but at the end of that um, that ordeal, when I was already in the hospital, um, God spoke to me so clearly. And He said, you know, I love you. And that love, you cannot comprehend. You cannot understand that kind of love. The love that I am giving to you right now is so special that you will only understand it when you will experience it and when you will share it to others. And uh, that conversation with God was so special because it brought me closer to God. That moment when I'm just all alone by myself in, in the parsonage and talking with God and holding, <laughs> holding my tears. It was a very special moment when I realized that what I needed at that time is nothing else but God. And the Lord just reminded me that, Anak, let me, let me handle this. Worry about yourself right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. And so after that prayer, uh, my doctors came to me and told me, I'm going out of the hospital in a few days. My, my, my tears just flowed. Uh, I cried and cried, not in uh, in anger anymore, but it was more of thankfulness. It has given me so much strength. Mas lumalim pa yung pananampalataya ko sa kanya. Um, my wife and I were, are more than ever prayerful every morning. But this time, you pray for a reason. You pray for you pray for your existence. You pray for for everything, you're, you're, you 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 be thankful for everything. Parang second life ko na, pa second life ay binigay niya sa akin. Yung talagang minakamalaking na pasalamat ko sa Panginoon. Despite sa mga pangyayari, hindi ka pinapabayan. Sa kayo mga friends, mga friends, relatives, palagi kang ini, di palagi ako ng ining kar sa trugal messages. We know that sinag comes from above, right? The sinag of God can actually also come from the people around us, people encouraging us, praying for us, talking to us. I got all the messages, uh, the concern, the prayers of people around me. And I saw hope. Even 
at that time when their messages and their prayers started pouring in by those messages and those prayers i saw a ray of hope seen and i can I, i can really say that it was that moment when i felt the warmth of god's love This is not uh, an experience that anyone would like to happen to them or to any of the family members. Never do so. Always have faith, and and He will provide. He will give you all the strength. Um, he will give you all the 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 reason. He will lead you to the right people to take care of you, and and believe in His healing hands. So you you just be hopeful. You have to trust and leave everything to Him. Sabi nga nung Jeremiah, uh, for you are the one I praise. So you leave it up to him. And he will heal you and he will save you. So don't be scared. At these times, iisipin mo, Lord, ano nangyari sa akin? Bakit ba't nangyari sa akin to? 
But if you look at your life, makikita mo talaga yung Lord, the Lord was always faithful to you. Kaya nga po, diba, yung, count, yung song natin na Count Your Blessings, name them one by one. It's such a, it, it's a Sunday school song, but then it, it holds so much meaning because at, at your low moments, you will forget that the Lord was faithful to you. But then when you do recall everything that happened to you, you would see how faithful the Lord was to you. And that's one of the reasons what, uh, why I got through this ordeal as well. Remember how God was faithful to you and remember how God will continue to be faithful to you. Hindi ako pinabaya ng Panginoon. Uh, huwag tayong mawala pag-asa talaga. Kahit na gano'ng kahirap na yung sitwasyon natin. Kasi kung nasa, nasa atin yung Panginoon, hindi tayo pababayaan. He is good. He moves when things are very uncertain for us. Even if we don't understand what is happening with us, we should never fear because His promise is so clear even up to this day that He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. And for those who are participating and reaching out to people right now, we live not for ourselves, but we live also for others. God's greatest commandment is to really love Him with all of our heart, our being. And His second commandment is to love our brothers and sisters just as we love ourselves. We can be channels of God's message of love and care to them when we relate to them, when we pray for them, when we say hello even to them, when we wish them well, when we pray and uh, offer to them our prayers. Because it's not more of what we can do if we have COVID. It's really devastating and we really don't know what to do. But what helps is when we hear God's voice through our loved ones, through our friends, through the church, and that strengthens us. And so as we hold on to the faith, hold on to the promise of God, let us experience that as well through God's people. Because that's the only way that we can truly experience God's love, God's protection, God's care through God's people.
supporters, brothers and sisters of Cosmopolitan Church, United Church of Christ uh, in the Philippines. We are grateful that God has made it possible for us to gather together, share experiences, talk with God through music, and together also find solutions to the many challenges that our churches are facing. When the pandemic struck nearly two years ago, one of the sectors in our society which was heavily damaged or affected in a sense were the churches themselves. People took it for granted that since these are faith institutions, God-fearing institutions, God will take care of them. But what actually happened was that churches, whether Catholic, 
Protestant, Muslim, or other faith groups had difficulty keeping themselves afloat or perhaps even alive and to maintain their activity and do their responsibility to give comfort, to give assurance to their respective parishioners. Many of the churches, whether big or small, encountered difficulty in raising funds to maintain their staff, to maintain their choirs and other uh, committees or organizations in charge of giving services uh, to the people. And even the simple tasks of paying their staffs. And this was because people could not move about. And at that time, people were also forbidden to leave their homes, even to go to church. Choirs were also discouraged because the finding was that choirs would be one of the most um, potent uh, spreaders or super spreader of the COVID virus. So even choirs were forbidden. And what happened is that many churches had difficulty keeping their heads above the waters of COVID. And a wonderful thing happened. Various churches, Catholics, Protestants, associations, other faith groups got together and decided under the leadership of the Secretary of Justice to talk to the IATF and request that the churches be allowed certain activities and perhaps granted lenience in the conduct of their duty to take care of their parishioners. And this was followed by a very uh, prolonged uh, negotiations because IATF could not make exemptions for religious groups, even as the rules were imposed on all citizens and on all institutions. And somehow a miracle has happened Churches got together, Catholics, Protestants, Muslims, Iglesia Ni Cristo, and other denominations got together and talked to the IATF. And efforts of the churches to mitigate their difficulties, because churches are composed also of human beings, staff, whose families have to be fed, whose benefits have to be paid for, parishioners and members who have to be inspired and comforted, whether through sermons or through music and through other activities. And we were allowed bit by bit, stage by stage, and the requirements were loosened were um, in a sense made more generous and reasonable even after bargaining not only with the IATF but also with the local governments who were very concerned about the safety of their constituents and so even as we are especially hurt and unhappy over the impacts of COVID, one blessed thing happened. The churches got together different faiths because they were facing the same challenges. And 
These challenges were true for many of our churches, including Cosmopolitan Church. And this explains why Cosmopolitan Church, in cooperation with Manila Concert Choir and Cosmos Choir also, have put together, have crafted this concert to assist Cosmopolitan to recover from the devastation of the pandemic. I would like to repeat again that the pandemic affected not only humans, but also faith institutions who serve the scared, terrified, dying, and sick humans. And so why the Manila Concert Choir? Manila Concert Choir has been holding its rehearsals in Cosmopolitan Church for decades and decades. It has sponsored many of our concerts and in turn we have performed in many of their activities. So it was natural for Manila Concert Choir to be uh, requested and for us to happily accept and be honored with this request to join the Cosmopolitan Church in a choral con concert, as well as remembrances and sharing of experiences. Why Sinag? Um, I looked it up in the dictionary, especially since I am a, a Visayan and I wanted to be as precise as possible in understanding the definition of what Sinag is. And I understand it refers to rays or lights from the sun, from the moon, from the stars, from a lamp, from the halos around the head of heads of images and saints. If you look at their uh, paintings, there's always a ray of light around their heads. But Sinag also, of course, comes from God. And now, after nearly two years, we are witnessing and we are seeing a Sinag, a ray of light. As Isaiah predicted in Isaiah 9 verse 2, the people walking in darkness, the darkness of COVID, have seen a great light. And those living in the shadow of death, we have been living in the shadow of death for two years, a light has dawned. Also, Isaiah said later, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And very, very much later, Jesus Christ himself said, I am the light of the world when he came. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I had difficulty choosing the appropriate verse which uh, talks or touches on light because I did not realize how many verses in the Bible have a reference to light. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And we always talk about being uh, righteous, trusting in God. I commit your way to the Lord in Psalms. Trust in Him and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, like the synag, your vindication, like the noonday sun. And of course, 
the first few words that we read in Genesis in the Bible is God said, let there be light and there was light. So let there be a concert. Let there be a sharing of experience. Let there be a bearing of each other's burdens as we move on and walk with God in the light. Thank you. Sabi ng tatay ko, kapag mayroong nagtanong na saan ang bayan mo, isagot mo ay yung totoo. Sabi ng tatay ko, marami ang ibang bayan, masigit ang kayamanan pagbibigay. Maraming ang naghihirap Ngunit hindi magtatagal Yayaman din tayo Sabi ng tatay ko Di bali nang naghihirap Basta't lahat ay patay-patay At nagkakaisa Sabihin mo Thank you.
troubled hearts, especially at this time of the year, that we prepare to celebrate and welcome the coming of our Savior, the Prince of Peace. As Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Times of trouble heartaches and sorrow play an important part in our lives and faith in God will give us the peace that surpasses all understanding as we go through turbulent times. Let us choose to trust in the Lord and be confident in the knowledge that He is always in control. Sina speaks of that confidence, that assurance that whatever we may be going through, we can remain hopeful, for a ray of hope shines forth even in the darkest night of our lives as a people. We salute our frontliners to whom we also dedicate this concert, for they are the true heroes in this pandemic and God's instrument of hope. Finally, this virtual concert would not be possible without the help of many hands led by their love for Jesus Christ. The council and ministerial leadership of UCCP Cosmopolitan Church, Council Chair Keith Arley Cabral, Pastor Alvaro Centurias Jr., and yours truly, Marlene Natividad Suarez, sincerely thank Department of Education Secretary and MCC President Leonor M. Briones and the Manila Concert Choir for their wholehearted support in this endeavor. Much appreciation goes to the CNET Production Committee led by Dominga Tabada and members Diaconal Minister Jeffrey Ramirez, Jorim Sampayan, Bethel Ann Bataliones, and Ivan Bataliones, the virtual choir members of the UCCP Cosmopolitan Church, and the cooperation of our testimony givers who gave the true essence of Sina in their personal lives. This fundraising event was successfully put together by the dedicated participation of our Sina Finance Committee, led by Agnes Remolona, and supported by Church Treasurer Winifredo Custodio, Board of Deacons Chair, Attorney Corin Labo, and Board of Trustees Chair, Elsa Mumar. We sincerely thank all our patrons, sponsors, and donors who generously and cheerfully gave financial resources to Sina. May our good Lord bless you beyond measure for the act of sowing in the ministry and needs of UCCP Cosmopolitan Church. 
To the online viewers of CNAG, may this Christmas concert be an encouragement and a reminder of our faith in God's Word. God is with us in all seasons of our lives. Isang mapagpalang Pasko sa ating lahat. A blessed Christmas to us all. Once again, sisters and brothers in Christ, before the final song, let us all bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. God of mercy and hope, we praise and glorify your most holy name, for you are our source of strength and hope in whatever season of life we are. We thank you that your grace and mercies allow us to withstand even the most challenging situations in life. We thank you for the assurance of answered prayers, for your faithfulness and provisions that even go beyond our heart's desires, for they are nothing short of miracles that are testaments to our undying and unconditional love for your children. Tonight, we draw near with confidence to your throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace especially for those who are most in need of your reassuring presence at this time. May they be encouraged by the message of the songs and the testimonies shared with us tonight, that in you we have a giver of comfort and hope, and even joy in the midst of the shadows of this long, dark night. May doubt and fear sorrow and mourning caused by this pandemic be replaced by steadfast faith, unwavering hope, and even joyful dancing as you clothe them with your love, comfort, and gladness. Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for all that you are doing and will still do in our hearts and in our lives. Amen and Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.
Yeah.